let's get drinking some tissue. <laughs> I literally ate, slept, breathed. Kevin Gates and the career and the sure. music. Women, we're, we're naturally <laughs> multipliers. We're yes. going to make some stuff happen. If you give us just a little Man, bit to work that's with, it. we're going to explore it. The public has their opinion of how you live your life and mm -hmm. how you've been able to do what you do. That shit is not easy. It's very difficult. I, I experience anger, hurt, betrayal, manipulation, whatever. Tell me about that journey. I actually ended up having to stay in the hospital because the people, they like damn near killed me. I saw the vision, like, you know, and I was doing it for the embetterment of my family as a whole. Can I help you make millions teaching this course? Like, I can really oh, help you put this together. This is what I do. I I'm like, can I, like, can I help you? <laughs> Some people use Adderall. I use frequency music. Hey, okay? that's Burn what you do the with them. It is what I'm going to call it. Literally. Self pleasure, pleasure practices, because that could go so many different ways. So many any different way. Can I have a girl crush? <laughs> I got a you girl can. crush. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where I sit down and have conversations with entrepreneurs who have amazing journeys and they are ready to share their journey transparently with you. And today, you guys, I am super excited because I have a guest here that I'm going to get to know in real time right along with you guys. I've been waiting for this conversation to happen all week. And without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the beautiful, the naturally beautiful <laughs> Miss Drika Gates sitting here. Hi, Drika. Hi. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Happy yeah. to be here. Happy to be here. Yes. You know what? If I'm being honest, first impression, you are, uh, you seem to be a lot like more shy than I would expect. I would have expected you to be like a little bit more like out there and. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm like an extrovert. I can be shy, but when I warm up, like I'm, 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 I'm up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if you could tell our audience a little bit about what you do, yeah. we'll get started. All right. So I, my name is Streaka Gates. Um, I've spent like 17 years, well, the majority of my life working in the music industry as a um, music manager. Um, and at the top of 2021, I ventured into my own um, wellness company. I started up my own wellness, wellness company and I've also ventured into cannabis. Um, so that's the space that I'm in now. I'm in health and wellness. Okay. Health yes. and wellness. And so you've been in the music. Are you still actively in the music industry? No, I'm not. No, no. But that's where you got your start in terms of business. Oh, entrepreneurship? yes. Entrepreneurship. Oh, yes. Okay. From a child, really a baby, 2006 to 2022. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so obviously we'll talk a little bit about that journey, but today, uh -huh. um, are the cannabis, business and the the wellness brand the same business or these are two totally different oh, things no. they're two totally different entities so I have Drika Wellness which is the wellness brand mm -hmm. and Love's Harvest is my cannabis brand okay yes. Love's Harvest is the cannabis brand yes uh, what 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 developed the interest for cannabis <laughs> I feel like it's all just like it goes hand in hand like if cannabis was legal it would be underneath my Drika Wellness umbrella mm. because for me like it's it's medicinal, like it's a plant. It's very healing and it has many, 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 many uh, good medicinal properties that are very beneficial for all for us. Where are you from, Drika? I'm from Louisiana. Where? Me too. Really? I'm from uh, New Orleans. Okay. I mean, my family's from New Orleans, but I was born and raised in Baton Rouge. Okay. Yeah. So what brought you to, you live in? Mississippi now. That's home base. On a farm, right? On a farm. On a farm. Yes. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> because on a farm is not the usual thing that you hear. So yeah. let's, let's start there. How did you end up in Mississippi from... Louisiana. <laughs> okay, so 2009. I'm going to actually go back before then. Okay. 2017, we bought the farm. It's a blueberry farm in Mississippi. It was just supposed to be a place for us to just go, mm -hmm. for my family, for us to just go and kind of like regroup mm -hmm. and like recharge after just like touring for damn near the entire school year. I mean, okay. it's, I said school year, but you know, the entire year. Yeah. Um, and at the end of 2019, I had like this kind of like awakening epiphany, I want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just like, I'm, we were in California at the time and I just wanted to leave and mm -hmm. go to the farm. And so, um, right in the middle of our move, COVID hit. And it was kind of like, wow, like, I'm glad I actually made the decision to leave and go to the farm. And so that's how I ended up there. And I love it. That's where I like transformed. That's where I kind of like stepped into my power. So 
out of all the places that you've seen and been yes. to, it's the blueberry farm for you. Ex- <laughs> yes, it is. And I've been all over the world. It's the blueberry farm. It's the blueberry farm for you. Are you yes. like so committed to the farm? Like one of my favorite things to do is to step outside in nature with bare feet. Yes. Uh, and Someone made a joke uh, like a year or so ago and asked me if I was a tree hugger. And my response was like, actually go and try hugging a tree and you'll love it. Man, like in real life, you will. And I'm one of those people, too. Like I try to go. I don't try, but I go outside and walk barefoot as much as I can because people don't understand like the health benefits of doing that. Mm -hmm. Just like mentally, spiritually and also like physically, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do that. Is that a space (laughs) that you kind of grew into like over time? Yes, it is, because like growing Growing up as a kid, I would go outside and play, but bugs and all that, that was not me. Yeah. At that time. At that time. Yeah. But now. There's a lot of bugs on the farm. (laughs) Exactly. So this is all blueberries. You don't have any animals. Oh, yes. I have lots of animals. Okay. Yes. What are you doing with this farm? Like, is this revenue generating? Is this a passion project? Like. What are you doing with the farm? And like, what's what's the goal for, <laughs> for farm ownership? You don't meet too many people who own a farm. Right, right. So the farm is really like a sanctuary. It's an oasis. It's really like a passion project. It's okay. like a place for my family to just be there and just to just to live and experience Mm -hmm. life um, differently than what we're normally used to, which is, you know, being in the industry, being on the road all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm really building like an oasis there. Mm -hmm. I always go back to, um, you know, on coming to coming to America, when you see the elephants walking around and all that, like (laughs) that's, that's kind of where I'm going. Paint the picture for me. You're on this farm and I'm imagining like, I'm imagining like little house on the prairie kind of farm no is this more luxurious than that or is- um it's getting there and it will be that so okay. like at the end of this year like i'm starting on starting to build our forever home which is like a dream home it's fully custom like to us and our needs um but but yeah, it's getting there. There was nothing there, but it's it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress for oh, sure. Oh yes. But do we have cows <laughs> running rampant outside? So what I do have, we have cattle, but they're like on another property. Okay. But we have peacocks, we have camels, alpacas, goats, tortoises, ducks. Do you interact with these animals? Of course. Yes. This is like really your thing. This is really my thing, First y'all. First of all, Rika, talk to me because. <laughs> You literally, uh, music industry, I want to back up just a little bit, okay? And you got started in music. Tell us about, what were you supposed to do? The little girl in you, 13, 14, (laughs) 15 years old, what was she supposed to do? In she, life. she was supposed to do what she's doing now Ooh. but like for real for real okay. I, I kind of like you know got off course a little bit but she's supposed to do what she's doing now mm-hmm. um but I actually went to college for to be a doctor because I always wanted to help people I like felt like I was a healer you know what I'm saying so I went to school to be a doctor what kind of doctor I wanted to be a pediatrician really yeah I didn't finish of course right. I dropped out after like two years. Okay. Yes. Med school is hard. Yeah. College is hard. Pe- yeah. I dropped out after two years too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're supposed to be a doctor. We're, we're yes. a long way from we're a doctor. We're a long way from but, a doctor. But your mom. Yes. So you've been doctoring there. I sure have sure. been. Yes. Okay. So the 13 year old, you would have been a doctor. Yes. A pediatrician specifically. But yes. we got off course. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point did you decide like this isn't for me? I want to do something different. Well, it was like while I was in college, I was also with my husband at that time. And I just saw something in him that was just amazing. Um, He's always been a writer and he started like making music. And to be honest with you, I was bored in college, like in my high school year, I was taking college courses gotcha. and everybody knows the first two years of college is like a bunch of just general ed courses. Sure. So it's like, what the hell, you For know, sure. like this isn't fun. Yeah. Um. And so I went to him one day and I was like, you should really take this serious. Like, do you want to take this serious? Because I think you should. OK. Um. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so I literally like I dropped out of college and I started just like spearheading his career Mm. figuring it out as i went behind every man (laughs) is an even stronger is an even stronger woman yes i always love these stories i feel so much like i'm single yeah i'm not married yet but i feel so much that even with all the things that i've been able to accomplish in life Mm -hmm. uh, my purpose is not going to be fulfilled until 
I do that, what, what you do. Like take, or, help yeah. someone, help a man um, who has a dream, who has a built-in talent, who mm-hmm. kind of has a vision for his life. Yes. And say, you know what? I recognize this in you. Let's multiply that. Man, yes. Like that at the... You're, Okay, I have chills right now. (laughs) No, because that's real talk. Like, I really don't like the what's going on right now with the women just like talking down on men and men Mm -hmm. ain't shit. And Mm -hmm. and I'm like, Mm no, like, yeah, like I feel like man and woman, like we're here to help one another. We're here here to lift one another, lift uh, each other up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm here to support you. You're here to support me. Mm -hmm. You're my king. I'm your queen. Mm -hmm. Like let's let's do this. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Let's do this. Let's do this in harmony. Yes. Let's be willing to learn from each other. Yes. Accept leadership from each other. Exactly. It goes both ways. I love that so much. That's a beautiful (laughs) position to have been in to be able to contribute on a scale that you contributed. Yeah. Um, what were you, what was your area? Like, what was your shine? There's so many women and I'm asking you this yeah, yeah. because there's so many women who's got that man, girl. Yeah. They got that man <laughs> and he got all the vision in the world. You right. Hear me? Right. But he's not putting the pieces together yeah. fast enough. <laughs> yes. He's not. Give us some tips on how to really come in, step in and say, because every man doesn't want it. Yeah. Every man doesn't want true. it. Some men want women to kind of play the position of seeing I'm the leader mm-hmm. and I'm the provider and yeah. that's that. And and they're not comfortable enough just yet. Exactly. So how do you first get in a situation or a maneuver through a situation where mm-hmm. you're comfortable being that backbone Mm -hmm. but really leading the charge it's all about I'm not going to say it's a game but at the end of the day like you still have to make that man feel like a man Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and not overpowering him not talking down to him not Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying just really being there to uplift and support Mm -hmm. you know and it's a fine line with that because you could easily get into that mommy role and you should be doing this but you have to catch yourself you know what I'm saying because we're not here to be their mother Mm -hmm. we're here to really just to be of support Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because they need us and we need them at the end of the day for sure so I'm a business coach yes and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs Uh and I help them like scale their businesses and all this stuff so one of the things that I struggle with is you know I meet ambitious men all the time yes one of the things (laughs) that I struggle with in full transparency yes is always becoming their coach yeah and then it's like okay yeah. I might rather coach you than ditch yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I am trying to like, at what point, at what point do you say, okay, I'm going to date you for this period of time. I see what you have going on. Yeah. Then I'll step in. Like, what would you recommend that look like? So for me, you have to have a balance in that because full transparency, <laughs> Drika got caught up in the business aspect of it and always putting business first and okay. forgetting to be, not forgetting to be the wife, but mm-hmm. not being more the wife than the business partner, For sure. you know? So it's really, and every situation is different, but you have to have to find that balance and also catch yourself, mm-hmm. be truthful and honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And your man, he will probably be truthful and honest with you too about, Hey, like, I need you to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Down just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Let's go to dinner and not talk business. Exactly. Yeah. That part, you because know, I get so caught up in that part. I know mm. I'm one of those people. I've been there before, but I really had to like step back. But that's love to me. It is. <laughs> Do, look, that's me. I'm that's like, you didn't see me. what I did for you. Like that is my love language. That is love to me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, so when it comes to love languages, I'm all of them. Like I do yeah. all of them. I don't believe that I can thrive in a relationship at uh, in which one of them don't present themselves at some point right right right. but when I tell you (laughs) let me be the strategy behind your talent baby I got you I got you you hear me okay can I what is your sign I'm a Capricorn that's okay okay what's your sign I'm a Virgo but we're both like earth signs Mm -hmm. we're very grounded and we're we're like the people that get shit done we're the people that get shit done yes what qualified you to be that person though like you, you didn't have any experience in the music no, industry. None. And 
really all you had to work with, so to speak, was a, an incredible guy who mm -hmm. had talent as an artist. Yes. But you come in on the business, like, you got to be real confident to tell somebody, like, let's yeah. turn this up. What qualified you or what did you do? I had a vision. I saw it and I believed in it. And one thing that I, this is advice to like everyone, you have to trust in yourself, mm. trust in your own vision. Like mm. don't look for, don't look outside for outside validation. Don't look to other people to tell, to tell you that, yes, that's something that you should do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're going to also come with the negativity too and mm -hmm. tell you that maybe that isn't what you should do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of that, but I trusted in myself and the vision that I saw and had for you know, everything. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. Trust, <laughs> trust in yourself, believe in the person. Exactly. That you're supporting. Yes. Um, and, and trust in your ability to get it done. Yes. That's more important than anything, than anything, than anything. <laughs> Listen, women, we're, we're naturally multipliers. We're yes. going to make some stuff happen. If you give us just a little Man, bit to work that's with, it. we're going to explore it. So 17 years in that industry. Yes. What was that like? Listen, first of all, it's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the music industry right now. Yes, yes. And I am I am just pleased that you are here and you are sane and you Man. are <laughs> We've been having a lot of conversations yeah, I'm about like, there's this. A, there's yeah. a lot of stuff happening in the music industry right now, but what was the experience like for you? Um, I was I said I had tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Like I literally ate, slept, breathed like Kevin Gates and the career and the sure. music. Um, so that's what it was for me. But it was, like I said, we spent 80 to 90% of the entire year on the road, touring overseas in the country. Like, What was your role? Oh, I was manager. I played every single role. I was the manager, the business manager, the booking agent, the DJ, the, I literally played every single possible role that you could. You know what would be a good idea? Why don't you teach a I, class? Like everyone create? has said this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because the business coach and me can't help myself right now i know i know why don't I know. you create a class because there are so many people right now with the nature of the music industry yeah. booking and um what do you exposure pr mm -hmm. those are the things that are setting you apart it's oh, not yeah. really the record deal necessarily yeah anymore. no 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 oh hell no and it ha i will say that it that that's never been the case because mm -hmm. even when you get a deal, you're, you just have a deal. Yeah. You better have your people in there on those people's asses behind those desks getting shit done. You better talk that talk. <laughs> you better talk that talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you, somebody else has to be working, you know? I love that. You got, you, somebody has to handle your business. Yes. Can I help you make millions teaching this course? Like I can really oh, help you put this together. This is what I do. <laughs> I'm like, can I, like, can I help you? <laughs> can I be the battery in your back? Hey, no, sure. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm so open to it. It's just like there's so many things that I want to do. You're and it's doing like, a lot. Yeah. So you go through 17 years in music. Yes. At that time, you also start having some babies. Yes. You become a mom. Yes. Yes. Did you find it difficult when you became a mom to balance everything that now you have to show up as a wife? Mm -hmm. You have to show up as almost an operations person in yeah. the business of Kevin Gates. Yes. But then to the music industry, you have to be this boss. Mm -hmm. You have to be the point of contact. You're the go through kind of person. Mm hmm. But then you have the babies. Yes. And you have to be mom. Yes. Tell me about that journey. That was very, very difficult. And in the very beginning, when my babies were born, when they were in utero, I'm on stage, I'm backstage. When they were born, they were in a kang kangaroo pouch backstage with the earmuffs on while I'm working, yes. you know, so I had them with me for as long as uh, like as long as I felt that they were with me and comfortable but once they started like walking around I would let them go and like stay with my mom mm -hmm. and then we eventually like got a nanny to help because it's hard you know what yeah. I'm saying and it was hard to even let my daughter go and stay with my mom like while we were on tour I actually cried the first time I had to like because it was like I didn't want my baby to I wanted my baby to be with me on the road <laughs> but that wasn't what was best for her yeah. you know um so yeah it, 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 it was very difficult how many kids do you have Two. You have two children. Yes. And how old are they? Nine and 11. Nine and 11. And it was your 11 year old that you, you like, I don't know about this. What? Uh, like you were, uh, you were nervous about. Oh yes. Like okay. the separation. But mm -hmm. like when my, my little, my son came, it was like, okay, we, we've done this already. Yeah. And they're done. Yeah. That. Do you, uh, do you guys homeschool your kids? Yes. Okay. Yes. The schools today, they're just like way too progressive for me. 
Way too progressive. Oh, these kids, <laughs> these they're, kids they're are adulting. Much. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna need y'all to be homeschooled. These kids yeah. are for sure adulting yeah. these days. So you're you've become a parent. During mm-hmm. that journey, the time apart is obviously really difficult. Yes. And I want to sit here for a minute because there are so many women, mm-hmm. spe- especially there are men as well. Mm-hmm. But usually the burden of parenthood and I use burden loosely. Yeah. And the reason that I use burden here is because outside of being a mother who's loving and caring and doting and all of those things. The burden is I don't get to do these things because I have to be here for you in this way. Yes. And there is no other option. Right. Yes. And some people would say, oh, that's just what happens when you decide to be a mother. Yeah. But you're a career woman. Yes. You've got stuff going on and you're trying to balance it all. Yes. Right. It becomes burden like mm-hmm. to have to maneuver in this way. And some women are moms right now they're looking at you and they're mm-hmm. like you did this with two kids on the road traveling mm-hmm. what was it in you that said I can't give up like why didn't you just become a stay at home wife oh my gosh you're about to make me cry oh, sorry. <laughs> um like I really like I saw the vision like you know and I was doing it for the embitterment of my family as a whole mm-hmm. you know I'm sorry like you really make me no. cry no <laughs> let's get drink of some tissue <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I love this because yeah. this is what people need to see. This this back end yeah. journey, you are all over blogs and you've got millions of followers yeah. on the internet. They get to see the well put together. Drika, <laughs> but this is the part yeah. that touches hearts like and changes lives. Drika, yeah. People need to really be clear. Like, I know. <laughs> why didn't you just say, you know what? We got money. We can do this. I can just be a stay at home mom and not yeah. just be. I don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's 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 a job that's within a itself. Yeah, that's, that's the thing but what made you like did you did you have an upbringing or um a potential situation that you're afraid to go back to like what made you say I'm not gonna stop this um the me wanting better like for my kids and for my family that's Mm -hmm. what it was it was like I feel like everything even me coming back out right now like again I could be on my phone I'm on on the farm like literally in retirement mode you know what I'm saying but I'm like no one I have a message for everyone like Mm -hmm. I have a lot of knowledge to share with everyone Mm -hmm. you know that's first and foremost and then second is that when now I grew up like in a well-off family um like upper middle class you know but I still had to work my ass off yeah. and I feel like, like, no, my kids aren't going to have to do this. They're going to be able to step into whatever business they choose of ours Mm -hmm. that we have and Mm -hmm. run it. Or if they decide they want to be a baker, like my daughter, she wants to own her own bakery. Mm -hmm. Like I'm helping her. I'm grooming her to do that, you know, and to not have to struggle, to not have to bust her ass. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. And I'm like wanting to cry because it it has been so difficult being away from them, like yeah. being on the road, being away from my kids. Like I literally like cried when I had to hand my daughter over to mm. my mom, you know, and it's like, I'm so grateful that my kids have an understanding, you know, of like just the industry and um, work, um, well, hard work. They hard understand work. the value of it. Yeah. Um, but that shit is not easy. It's very difficult, but I know that they, they understand, you know, yeah. and they, and they love and respect me like to the fullest. Do you so know what I love most about this moment right now <laughs> is you made mention of coming from a well-off family. Mm-hmm. So people already think it's easy. <laughs> yeah. The public has their opinion of how you live your life and mm-hmm. how you've been able to do what you do. Yeah. I hear a mother that says, yes, I came from a well-off family Yes, I have a well-off husband, yeah. but I'm also a well-off woman, that, right? Yes. I hear that coming from you. I hear you saying that though those things were true, mm-hmm. they weren't easy. Not at all. Not at all. Like I said, like I could be sitting around right now and living off of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The 17 years of work, but no, like there is more, you know, yeah. there's more. Well, <laughs> not, and not only is there more. As women, a lot of times, especially when we come from well-off families, 
Um, did you grow up in a two-parent household? Yes, I yeah. had both my parents. <laughs> so we grow up in well-off families, mm -hmm. and we have mom and dad, and we become daddy's little girl. Yep. And then you go off and you get married, and you become your husband's, you know, mm -hmm. baby and yes. all these things. <laughs> there can introduce a time period where you don't, where you're fighting to feel significant. Yep. Because you've got all this power around you. You were born. So you're like fighting for your voice. Yep. Right. And when I'm looking at you, I feel like I'm almost seeing my daughter in you. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we didn't come from a well-off family, but I grew up very, very middle class. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of my journey where I stumbled into poverty on my own because I just didn't have good financial habits. Right. right. And unfortunately, the beginning of my daughter's existence, mm -hmm. uh, well, the very beginning was great. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, middle school age, things were really, really hard. Yeah. And she's got she's got to see me at a time build what I've been able to build. But at that stage where these are the memories that she has, she only has memories of that down cycle because I talk about it and share it so much. Yeah. But the memories that she has right now are her mom is great. Her mom's a hard worker. Her mom is, you know, successful. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think like that could be traumatic as well yes because now you are even though these things are great blessings now your kids are like I've got to be just as great I've got to be just as wonderful yes. and I've got to do something really big with my life and I love that you said my daughter wants to own a bakery and I support that oh yes fully because I also growing up like I had this and a lot of women a lot of people in general can, could relate to this feeling like I wasn't doing enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always feel like I had to do more and more and more and more. And it's like, I never push that on my kids. If yeah. that's your passion, that's what you want to do. I fully support you in that because I know what me following my passion where that got me mm. you know so I'm all for it like baby what do you need from me what like you need, need to take some classes like you know so I'm full support yes <laughs> what point did you like branch off you say okay we did 17 good strong years together yes. with me in this role yes um what was the decision like for you to say I'm stepping out of this role it was so COVID hit COVID was like a blessing in disguise okay you know what I'm saying because at that point in time COVID hit you know the entertainment world shut down it yeah. was you were doing concerts on your on, on the, on the computer yeah. <laughs> you know live streaming, streaming concerts. on instagram <laughs> praying to get a versus <laughs> man yes like there was no work you know um and then like at the top of 2021 that's where i finally like launched my drink of wellness mm -hmm. uh and it just felt good because it was like you know i love the music industry i love music in general but it was like it was i it was my time to mm -hmm. like move on from that, mm -hmm. you know, like, and COVID was the, that was, that was the turning point for mm -hmm. that, you know? And this is like, this is your thing. Your this idea. is my thing, my idea. This is your idea. Isn't it wonderful to be living in the, in the reward of your own idea? Oh man, it is beyond rewarding. <laughs> Drinka, it's not easy to do. No, no seriously. it's not. You it's wake not. up every single day and you look at your life and you're like, this is because I went I for my own idea. Yes. Yeah. And that shit is beyond rewarding. Beyond rewarding. <laughs> like, it really makes you feel unstoppable. It makes you feel like you can do anything. Mm. Like, anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listening to you and just feeling your energy, I believe that. Like, yeah. whatever, you, whatever you want to do, you're going to do it. And whatever vision you have for this wellness brand and the cannabis brand, yes. like, it will absolutely come into fruition. Yes. So we're in 2021. <laughs> yes. And you're like, okay, music isn't doing what it should be doing right now. Let's transition into something else. Was mm -hmm. this... Was wellness always a part? Like, are you vegan? Do you have a lifestyle that always supported that? Or was it like a newfound hobby because of COVID? Uh, no, health and wellness is something that I've always been into. Like, I wanted to become a doctor because I was always, you know, yeah. into health and wellness. Um, but what really stirred, like, steered me towards that, um, I guess, health and wellness and being, like, holistic and being eating clean and... Uh, was back in, I was, I don't know what year it was, but in 2000 and... Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here, and I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, 
personal growth and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you every single week, direct mentorship for me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're going to get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre recorded. This is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you want to elevate your life, you want to elevate your level of success. Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. I don't know the year. I was like 21 years old okay. and I actually had a breast reduction. Okay. It was supposed to be an outpatient outpatient surgery. I was 135 pounds with size 34G breast. Natural? Natural. 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 What? Natural. Got I was a little mama? thick. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. From my mom's side of family. <laughs> yes, I did. And they were literally like literally weighing me down. I had like grooves in my shoulders and like it was a medical necessity for me to have the surgery. Okay. Um, like insurance paid for and everything. Like it was serious. Yeah. Um, and I actually ended up having to stay in the hospital because the people, they like damn near cure, killed me. Yes. And so from then on, it was like, I vowed to like never step uh, like in a hospital or a fucking doctor's office yeah, again. I can imagine. Yeah. So that really, really like kind of scared me into well, it scared me away from mm -hmm. like the Western ways of medicine. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And so now you've been on this journey. We've got the wellness brand. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me about it. Like, what's the intent behind the wellness brand? It's really just me sharing like all of the tricks, tips and tools that I've learned, like along my journey. Like I have the skincare line, mm -hmm. which is all like custom formulas that I've created myself that I use myself day and, and skin, night. Honey, do you see her skin? <laughs> Do you do you see her skin? The skin oh, is skinning for thank sure. You. The hair, the skin, like I'm just thank you, everything. Thank you. So thank you're exuding you. the 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 result of what you're selling right now, yes. what you're producing. Okay, yes. so <laughs> skincare yes what else do we have um and i'm also just like little wellness tinctures like immunity boosters and then i also have this tincture it's called open for love mm -hmm. and that's really just like if you kind of feeling up tight or tense about something you just take like a few dropper fulls of that and it'll really just like relax you and just literally like open you up to mm -hmm. be able to receive and like, these are holistic everything is holistic everything is clean it's all plant-based um yeah Wow. All from the earth. Okay. So, you know, we're, we're in, we're in our era of health and wellness. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, yes. And, and, and so many people are open to it and receptive to creating new habits right now, just because of all the things that are going on in the yeah. world. Every time you turn around, somebody got <laughs> cancer and, mm. you know, people are just dying way too young. So we yes. are in this era of accepting that we got to do something right different, right? Mm -hmm. How are you getting this message out? Oh my gosh. That's what I'm using. Uh, Drika wellness. I'm doing it through that because okay. I'm sharing also just other tools uh, that I'm working on. It's just a process, you know, it's, yeah, a, process. it's, a, it's process. a process. It's a process mm -hmm. because it's like years of, you know, just things that I've learned along the way that have helped me mm -hmm. that I plan to share with like, the world really and mm -hmm. the people that gravitate toward towards it like thank you and the people are really like they're loving it you know mm -hmm. so i, I try. we gotta try it make sure we get some of that brie we gotta i actually, got you, you i got yes, you yes, yes, i'm like, into all this so i have a routine mm -hmm. um and i don't know you might laugh at my routine so i I'm, will never i am just getting started i well, will never not really. it's been a couple of years but every single day <laughs> What, Kia? <laughs> Every single day. So in here, I keep cold coconut water for the electrolytes. Yeah. Am you I know, I something already? love coconut water. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Keep because <laughs> I work out like five days a week now. And I thank you. And I, I was weaning myself off of pre-workout because it's yeah. just full of caffeine. Yeah. Unnatural caffeine. Yes. Like that. Yes. So I'm like into the coconut water for mm -hmm. the electrolytes. And then I drink um, eight ounces of water with 15 drops of chlorophyll. Yes. Am I on to something? Yes, I sell chlorophyll. With my chlorophyll, <laughs> with my chlorophyll water, I take my vitamin D and my vitamins, my vitamin Bs in the morning. Oh. And I do zinc, magnesium, and L-lysine at night. Oh, my God. Put me on. Am I no, on to something? You do I have a on routine? It. No, seriously, <laughs> you do. Like, okay. that is amazing. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you guys do, do you have uh, collagen? 
I have I I no I don't I because mean, it's not we something gotta, that I but I, I'm gonna look into that we got it we got to yes, get a good collagen yes. because your girl is I do collagen as well every okay. single day and I honestly believe this routine that I have that mm-hmm. I've had now for the last maybe four years wow this plus the fact that I don't be letting anybody's son stress me out let the church say amen <laughs> amen <laughs> <laughs> I'm 45, right? And you look amazing. Thank you. I wouldn't have never guessed that. I am 45 and I swear by this routine. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the biggest part is not not letting stress affect me internally. Like I, obviously stress is going to happen in life, Mm -hmm. right? But you can act, you can absorb stress. Yes. There are levels to how you deal with stress. Yes. And I would imagine that with the life that you live, mm-hmm. there are so many moments where stress can infiltrate mm-hmm. uh, your, your brain energy. Yes. How do you manage your stress? I have learned different tools to like process. I call it processing life's experiences. Okay. So if you think back to like a toddler, right? Mm -hmm. And they could be on the floor kicking and screaming one second and literally maybe a minute or two later, they're walking around like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Like we as adults have that ability. It's just that we get away. Mm -hmm. We have gotten away from that. But what I have done is I've actually learned the tools to be able to process life's experiences. So I don't stay still stuck in it Mm -hmm. of course I experienced it I I experienced anger hurt betrayal manipulation whatever Mm -hmm. I experienced all all of those yeah everything and every emotion is valid Mm -hmm. but I know how to process it now yeah and yeah how'd you learn this I actually worked with a spiritual psychologist for like almost three years and he oh he's amazing and he taught me some amazing tools his book it's called the Clarity Cleanse. Oh, I need it. Let me yes. oh, let me put that in my phone right now. Please the do cleanse. the Clarity Cleanse. Okay, the Clarity Cleanse. Yes, and this this is life changing. It's life changing. Okay. Like right. everything that's in this book is what I learned from him firsthand. Okay, I'm I'm on it. Listen, yeah. I what one thing that I am is a reader. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> one thing that I am is a reader, and mm-hmm. when I tell you I'm getting this book, like I'm not, I am taking notes on the podcast. You hear me? This is a I first. love it. <laughs> you know I mean? Y'all, the clarity too. cleanse. The clarity cleanse. What yes. else do you have for us? Like, because y'all, I wish y'all could feel her vibration right now. <laughs> I am really into. Um, so one of the things that I do to manage stress, uh-huh. I intentionally reprogram my energy. Yes. Yeah. That's why I'm like yes. That's that's what I do. It's just we just use. So we vibrate at a frequency internally, right? Because our bodies are made up of more than seventy percent water. Yep. Water flowing through us is uh, is is a frequency. That's why you can hear it, you can feel it. And so there are these uh, frequencies like on YouTube or on, you know, calm meditations, Uh whatever you want to use. And I'm like, what do I need to feel today? Yes. And it could be like the energy (laughs) of positive, you know, in my home, when I leave my home, when I leave my home, Uh I turn on a positive energy frequency and I just let it play through my speaker (sighs) the whole time. Because when I walk back in, I want to walk into that energy. And it really, really works. If you do this, you will go out and fight the world. And if you bring that across your threshold, now your home accumulates these memories of toxic feelings and negative energy. So I am really intentional about trying to counter all of that. You can't avoid everything yeah no you can't but you can help it yes you can you can life is always lifing but that is amazing mm-hmm. and very true it's just like people say oh i could feel the tension when i walk into the room yes, yes you can yes. feel the tension in the room Turn you know 538 hertz <laughs> frequency music baby like yes on YouTube. and it will really shift you. it really will listen some people use adderall i use frequency music <laughs> hey. okay and i will be at home Sitting, working, like I'll find mm-hmm. myself drifting off to sleep sometimes when yes. I'm like lacking motivation and I'm mm-hmm. sitting on my sofa because it's not easy to work from home. No, it's not. <laughs> and I will like get up and like, okay, put on that 728 real right, quick. Right, right. Because we need the energy of abundance and we right. need the energy of productivity and all these things. Yes. Oh my God, I love it when I meet people who are yes. like, hey. same. <laughs> yes, but no, that's very true. Yes. Yes. So you have been really intentional about your own healing yes spiritual journey yes have you ever gone on a spiritual retreat i sure have yes yes yes, yes. one of my favorite places <laughs> is in uh, arizona mm. 
okay. <laughs> so I took like a solo trip to Sedona. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Sedona is that deal, girl. But so yes. is Scottsdale is also another good place. But okay. It's a, it's a okay. little bit more vibey. Okay. There's a little bit more happening. But Sedona, um, gosh, what was the name of the resort we went to? I forgot. Um, there's two there that are really, really dope. I'm going to tell you. I think I'll. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna okay, tell you. Okay, okay. I'm like, um, is it enchantment? No, oh. no. But I have to go. Okay, to, okay, okay, okay. Um, what's my what's our resort? So I have a girlfriend who is on the same thing that I'm on. That's um, sanctuary. So... Okay, okay. I'm about to check that. You gotta go to sanctuary, and okay. this, it's a resort on Camelback Mountain. Okay, and it's just in the middle of nothing. Yes. And my friends would say, "Oh, what are you doing on this vacation?" And I'm like. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> People don't get it. Nothing. Nothing. And the first time I did this, I was on the tail end of a breakup. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to try something different. Yeah. Like that breakup, he, he, we were both ready for the breakup. Oh, right? yeah. And so there was not really any like um, there was no depression or yeah. anything like that. I just needed to cleanse and prepare myself for what was next. Yes. And I wanted to do something different. Like I've done the beaches and I've yeah. done all those things. And so I went to. Arizona. Uh-huh. And I went, it was around, it was like in December, end of the year, and um, there was this group in the hotel that had, that were off, that was offering a meditation experience, oh. right? And so I paid for this meditation <laughs> experience package. Mm -hmm. But when I went down, um, because it's around New Year's time, when I went there, there were just way too many people. Yeah. And the lady said to me, the instructor, she said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And I said, oh, well, I was hoping for a little bit more kind of peace and quiet yeah. um, and, and small group settings. Yeah. Girl, they had an option for you to do it by yourself in your room. Oh. Like they had the speaker and the yoga mat and all Amazing. the things. And that changed my life i already know now i have to go <laughs> on this type of retreat at least twice a year yes you need that to pour back into you yes what are the things you're doing to pour back into you Jika? the same thing ma'am i just started back doing my meditations yes. where i think well i call them self-pleasure practices Ooh, let me write that yes. down too. wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> Self-pleasure practices, practices. cuz that could go so many different ways. So many different ways. Um, so tell many. me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, some of them actually include so we're going to have to talk after yes, this like yes, for yes. real for real. Um, I took this 3-month course it's called Ladder to Bliss and I met the the lady who does the course in Tulum. Okay. And um it, it's amazing. It's about using like our sexual energy, which is also our creative energy and our energy that we use to manifest things. Mm. But we use that using that energy to uh to heal ourselves and to heal like old stories, old behaviors. Um so yes, it's amazing. Really? Yeah. Yes. Is this a course that's available to the public? Yeah. I need that. It is. Yes. But okay, we're we, gonna but talk we, after but, we're gonna talk after. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but yeah, self-pleasure practices is really just like loving on yourself. You can get out the shower and have your oil and you can go from like head from head to toe and just thinking your feet for, you know, carrying you throughout the day. Like it is so amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's like one of the practices that I do. Just like just loving on myself. Loving on yourself. Yes. Yo, I can't <laughs> wait to get home and take these clothes off and go love on myself. Like for real, for real. I'm no, I'm so serious. I'm dead serious too. When I express <laughs> gratitude, like I'll, I pray in the shower. That's mm -hmm. my preferred place to shower. I and one of the it. things that I thank God for is full, full use of my physical abilities, my mental ability, my spiritual feeling and all these things. But I never thought to like touch on myself like yes thank you, thank you shoulder for shouldering yeah thank, thank you for bearing this weight for me today yes thank you feet for allowing me to get to and from where i needed to go yes Drinkle. first of all you don't even understand you, <laughs> can i have a girl crush i got a you girl can. crush <laughs> no seriously yes this is, okay so you've got the self-pleasure practices yes um what else do you do to like when you're really feeling like you need to prioritize Drika in this moment. What what does that look like? I, I shut off 
I shut out everybody. My yep. phone is on do not disturb. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if the sky is falling. Like, mm-hmm. leave me be. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I really, I get really selfish with myself. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it's going to take at the end of the day. Like, we have to be in a constant cycle of, like, releasing and then filling ourselves back up. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so, um, that that is what I try to do, like, on the regular. Because our cups can get so full to where our kids could come and try to give us a hug and tell us how much they love us. And we might snap at them Mm -hmm. because we're just like, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, because we just, we haven't been given to ourselves. So I just try to make sure that I'm always pouring back in. You are so calm. Yeah. Your energy (laughs) is, I'm telling you, your energy is just so good. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't help but to think about some of the, hardship I think the yeah. public criticism and things mm-hmm. that you know happen and it you're giving me like it just bounces off of me yeah. like <laughs> this this aura this orb around me can't be penetrated yeah when you go through because you know every celebrity yeah and influencer has their cycle of when it's their turn oh yes and sometimes girl look at your turn yeah I, I had mine so every now and then it, it, it's, it's been your turn how do yeah. you how do you cope in a situation like that like your kids I guess are not like on social media no, like that my so kids you don't aren't. have that to worry about yeah. but what do you do because this is important because there are people who have not gone forward move forward with an idea mm-hmm. because their idea could be controversial or yeah. their idea could be something that's held at high level of judgment and they're mm-hmm. like I'm not doing it because I'm afraid of what those people are going to say right how do you maneuver anyway and I use anyway on purpose how do you do it anyway <laughs> around these critics oh my. who are judging you from their sofa and their cell phone man I learned that no matter what I do Mm -hmm. People are always going to have their own narrative. They're going to have their own story Mm -hmm. of what's going on or like, and that's something that I can't change and I don't want to change it. If that's how you get your kick and your feels for the day, have at it. You know what I'm saying? But I know what my truth is. I know who I am Mm -hmm. and I know what, I know who I am at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, you Mm -hmm. know? And, and I also learned that a lot of things are irrelevant. Mm. So much is irrelevant. You know, the only thing that is relevant is how we relate to what's happening Mm. you know and so that's kind of like the space that I'm in and again when it comes to just processing things yes I could hear some shit or see some shit and it might that shit might it might hit me you know what I'm saying yes okay y'all that now that one that one hit that one hit (laughs) I gotta regroup I gotta regroup exactly but at the same time like I told you I learned the tools to process all of that yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a kick and scream, curse, scream, shout, all of that. Mm-hmm. But after I'm done doing that for however long I do that for, mm-hmm. which really isn't that long, um I move on. Yeah. I move on. You move on from it. Yeah. Because that's all you can do. That's all you can do. I started to study the psychology of people. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's literally what I've been doing for the past few years. And it's it's amazing because once you learn, it's really all about when you change the way you relate to yourself, Mm -hmm. then the way that you relate to the world changes. The understanding that you have of other people. It's like you did some real foolish stuff. Exactly. But I know why you did it. Exactly. So it's like it doesn't like (laughs) that shit doesn't even matter. Like that shit doesn't matter. Understand why people do what (laughs) What people do, do. do. It don't. It just sh- don't bother you the doesn't. same way anymore. You can't allow it to. And honestly, you have a calling on your life yeah. that you can't stop here. Exactly. And spend too much time here. You got to keep moving. Got to keep. Moving. And sometimes these things are meant to make you tougher and to prepare you for what's to come. They are. Look, I look at every. I'm gonna use the word challenge as an opportunity for growth. Mm-hmm. Because had it not been for these challenges, I wouldn't even be where I'm at today. Not even where you're at. I today. would not. Mm-hmm. You know, and some of the greatest people have the most amazing stories. They really went through the struggle. Yeah, they experienced some shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, Are you experiencing any challenges? Like you've completely made a career shift, mm-hmm. and you're in a space that's highly competitive. Right? Yes, it's yes, highly yes, competitive yes, yes. In the wellness industry, mm-hmm. um, and and even in the cannabis industry yes. that is increasingly competitive oh, as well yes and it's hard it is it's hard it is <laughs> are you facing any challenges like do you ever face any challenges with people taking you seriously with this career change um I, 
I will say in my earlier years, not with necessarily with the career change now, because I feel like people have seen like what I've done and what I'm capable of. Okay. So it's just like, oh, <laughs> she's going to make it happen. Yeah. And then I don't give room for doubt. OK, because I'm I'm doing it <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I don't mean to sound cocky no. or anything like that, but but I'm, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So what is there to say? Mm-hmm. You know, of course, like when I was trying to get it. Well, not when I was trying, but when I was starting to get into the cannabis uh, space for myself and like doing my soul thing like alone Mm -hmm. I had people oh well you know this is who cares Mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying that shit doesn't matter it's the workaround to everything there's always a solution we're We're going to find the solution there's like a million different possibilities like what the hell like I don't I don't see a roadblock I'm gonna Go around it. <laughs> yeah. That cone only covers this much of the lane. Exactly. There's some side road over here that I can navigate yes, around. Yes, <laughs> I'm the person that's going to drive up on the sidewalk. Yes. To get around that. I'll walk around this thing, okay? Yes. Okay? We'll get a car on the other side. That part. I love that. Yes. I love that. So it's a fairly simple transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the cannabis brand. Yes. Is that available? Like, are you actively producing products? Or, like, tell me about that. So I'm finishing up construction on my first dispensary and it's in Mississippi. So okay. that is like the first product of this new uh, cannabis venture okay. is my dispensary. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that, I do plan on to planning on rolling out my own line of products. Okay. Yes. Do you, are you attaching your face to these brands? Like, are you building a personal brand? Um, no, it's the name is loves harvest, but I mean, of course I'm going to be attached to it, but I do want the brand to be bigger than me mm-hmm. one day. You know, mm-hmm. like I want it to be bigger than me. I don't want it. I don't want it to always have to rely on my or m- my presence. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, every so, pop up, every appearance. I don't want to, just to say that. Yeah. That's a lot of hard work. I know. I'm like, I don't want you it. You might to as well get to, back on the road. That part. <laughs> you might as well I get see, back on the road. Yes. And I'm not trying to do that. Right, so. right, right. I love that. I love that. OK, so we've got the beauty brand. We can find that. And in, in, what are your favorite products from your beauty brand? My release today. Or your wellness brand. I keep I, I keep okay. referring it to it as, as a beauty brand because okay. wellness makes you beautiful. It really does. It does. Like when you take care of yourself, like you can see it. What are your favorite products? My release the day cleanser. And I called it release the day Write because that that's what we should be doing every single release day. Release the day. Yes. Tell me about the inspiration <laughs> behind this. All with my journey. Okay. It's like I try to slip little gems in like here and there. So and people are actually like they're catching on to it. You know, Mm -hmm. I had someone come and tell me, they were like the way that you're, that you're teaching is amazing. Like people understand it because you can go too far into the, the woo woo stuff. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And people will check out and it's, not get it. It becomes weird. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel like I'm, I have found kind of like a lane to be able to get the message across and for people to be able to receive it. Mm-hmm. So that's the way, like how I, I, I kind of do it. So my, yeah. <laughs> your wellness brand is not just products, but it's also you educating people, teaching people. Yes. What is that like? Okay. So I'm actually, I'm not doing it just yet, Okay. but I am working on a few programs. Okay. Yes. Where people will be able to come and engage and just, is it learning like your thoughts and the things that you've learned over the yeah, years? Yeah, just the processes, the tools, the tools that we need to just be better humans, mm-hmm. you know, and the tools to master ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like that's something that we weren't taught at a young age. And that's what I'm teaching my kids now, self-mastery. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's super important. So, yeah. Do you believe in balance? hell yeah. yeah life life is all about all about balance when you asked me if I was a vegan earlier mm-hmm. hell no okay <laughs> I did it years ago and I was way out of balance like mm-hmm. since I've been on the farm now like I I'm I feel more balanced and I and I consume animal products now okay you know but it's all in balance mm-hmm. everything has to be in balance mm. are you do you consume from your own farm yes I do okay Tell, first what of all, I want a farm now <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I want a farm. Um, I got to introduce you to another friend of mine okay. who has a farm. And mm-hmm. um, there may be some synergy there with you guys because I know you farmer, uh, you, the farmer community. <laughs> you guys like to like swap. What are you growing over there? Yes. And here's what I'm growing. And send me a box. So I'll definitely make that connection. 
Um, but you're consuming products from your own farm. Yes. I know Drika not going outside and slaughtering pigs. No, no, no. Okay. I haven't done no, <laughs> no. I, oh, I, I, no, I'm not doing that part But you yet. will go and get the chicken eggs. I sure eggs. will. You will go to the coop and get oh, the eggs? Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes. Like, I love, like, interacting with the animals is like a part of it, too. Yeah. It's a part of it. Okay. It's a part of it. <laughs> okay. So, walk me through a day. <laughs> You wake up on the farm and we want eggs and bacon. <laughs> like, hey, look, I, I'm going outside. I'm sli- sliding on my little slippers. I'm getting in my little ranger. I'm driving up to the front, going to the chicken coop, opening up the little thing, getting the eggs and going back to the house and cooking them. And I've done that several times for the Are, kids. Do the kids do it too? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. And I bet <laughs> this is like the freshest scrambled egg. You like, can you even walk into an IHOP now? Like, oh, uh, hell no. I'm scared to eat eggs from, from anywhere else. I swear. Listen, Chick fil A, Chick fil A was the last of the um, fast food restaurants that I would eat at, right? Yeah. Particularly, and I don't even really love the taste of Chick fil A, but they had the antibiotic free chicken. Right. And then they just dropped a press release that said, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> not, not anymore. Oh, my God. So what am I going to do for quick food? Mm. I have no idea. Now it's time. Now my I next level say, is the farm. I was going to say meal prep. Meal prep. House. Maybe. I don't know. So <laughs> that'll make it faster. <laughs> living this experience, yes. eating off the farm, and you're prepared. Oh, yes. It has to also reduce the cost of like food expenses for you, too. Oh, yes. I actually calculated it one time. I don't remember the numbers, but I calculated the amount that I spent on like seeds versus like what it would cost in the Mm. stores. It was when I was in my really, really out there Mm -hmm. getting it in. Um, But yeah, it's it. There is no comparison. You know what I'm saying? And it's grown from the soil. Like the soil is full of life and nutrients that our bodies need. That stuff that. In the grocery stores. It <laughs> it's not the lab. same. Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of a result, but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media? You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client? Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. You no, know, it's farm. It's, yes. It's, well, it's uh, not wild. Call, it, well, it's farm raised, but not the kind of farm that you're talking about. Eggs. They're, they call these food labs farms. Exactly. Like you walk into a building with air conditioning and that. <laughs> that farm. part. It's not the same. It's not the same. Mm-mm. Wow. OK, so this is so <laughs> you wake up in the day. Yes. Tell me about a typical day in your shoes. Is this entrepreneur this mogul like i don't even want to say boss you are a boss oh. but tell me about the mogul what the, what's the day in your life look like okay so a typical day on the farm okay would look like me getting up before everyone else gets up because I have to have that time for myself. So I'll go next door, work out in the gym. After I do that, then I'll do what I call high vibe writing. So it's like 12 minutes of just letting it rip. I talk talk shit. Talk shit. I curse people out curse out the person that ran me <laughs> off the road whatever it is that's on my on my chest i get it off okay write it out for 12 minutes burn it that like neutralizes that you really negative. burn it yeah hell yeah like f them hoes. uh-huh <laughs> this and bitch fuck that y'all yeah. <laughs> it, 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 you better right and then you burn it and you burn it and you will be amazed at how you feel after you do that. It's huh. like a weight is being lift, lifted huh. off your shoulders. Teach me. Yes. Teach me. <laughs> yes. No, because part of my morning routine, mm-hmm. I journal every single day, but I'm super intentional in my journal that I keep. Uh huh. My rule is not to journal about the things that have gone wrong. Yes. I only journal about the outcomes that I desire, right? Yes. So this is what I'm working on. This is vision that I want to explore. These are things that I'm interested in. Yes. That's that man that I'm about to see what's up with. Right. You know, those kind of deals. <laughs> and But what do you do with those 
negative thoughts. What do you do with the hurtful moments? I'm about to There you go. Let it burn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's Burn what you do the with bullshit them is what i'm gonna call it literally and you do that before you do your yes. other journaling because you are supposed to keep those things so after i do that then you do the 12 minutes of the positive stuff the okay. stuff that you want to call in the stuff that you want to hold on to mm. yes i'm imagining like the 12 minutes of uh <laughs> the negative stuff i just got the visual of angela bassett <laughs> And uh, waiting to, to exhale. exhale when she lit the match on the car and she walked away like, and, Man, and what? Right. And, exactly. 12 minutes. I'm calling mine burn the bull ish. Hey. Real. Yes. Okay. I love we're, it. Then we're going into 12 minutes of the positive energy. Exactly. Get the stuff that right, you, Donnie. Exactly. <laughs> what you want to call in, what you want to hold on to. Yes. Yes. Drinking yep. this is good. Okay. Yes. And then And then what? And then I'll probably go outside, taking my shoes off, walking around barefoot. Okay. okay. Um, go back inside. The kids are probably getting up and getting ready to go to school, which is on the farm. Okay. So, cause they're homeschool. Okay. Yes. So you're just walking them across the land or. Oh well, yeah. Well, I'm just well, talking to them. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I'm just talking to them and just dealing with them before they go okay. and do their thing. Um, and then I'll probably, uh, go and check my emails because there's always work to do. There's always work. To do. <laughs> always mm-hmm. work to do. And I'm like, <laughs> And I try to limit my time to that because I always say, man, I'm ready to go outside and play. Mm -hmm. But my going outside to play is going and like uh, messing around in the garden or going and messing around with the animals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, after I do that, I'll probably take a break. And that's what I'll do. Go outside, play with the animals, play around in the garden. um, Just do stuff that like really kind of fills me up. Mm -hmm. Um, And then shit, after that, it's probably time to eat or something, (laughs) you know? Um, and then I'll see, I'll see the kids like throughout the day, <clears throat> excuse me, because they're, uh, you know, right at, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, so the, the day, the afternoon can just be whatever the afternoon needs exactly. to be. Exactly. Do you then have a nighttime routine? Like, oh, so the one that I've been trying to incorporate into my nightly routine is one of the self pleasure practices okay. where the lights are off That's and I'm fun. really just, yeah. That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, note to self. Yes. <laughs> note to, okay, she said nighttime. Let me write that part. Yes, because <laughs> it's good because it's good to really get into that mood, have that time with yourself. I tell the kids, hey, look, don't come knocking on my door. Mm-hmm. Like, leave me alone, please, for right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm meditating. Leave me alone. Right. Yeah. Mommy's meditating. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's just, it's amazing. Walk yeah. to that door if you want to. Right. <laughs> Traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> yes i love this so much yeah. okay so I, I i'm definitely gonna make some adjustments in my daily routine Aww. to see how it because how it ha- the the releasing um the, the burn for yeah. me is the biggest part that i took away from your routine mm-hmm. because sometimes like I teach, uh, you know, meditation yeah. and the importance of affirmations and reading them out loud and frequency. And, you know, it, for some people, it does kind of edge upon that. This is weird mm-hmm. stuff. And I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah. Um, because what they don't really hear in that is what they do hear is doing these things can protect you from absorbing so much of the negativity. Mm-hmm. But they don't hear well, when the negativity actually penetrates, what do you do with it? Right. And yes. that burn, the bullshit. Yes. <laughs> that's what you do with the negativity. Yes. Yes. Girl, so I live in a high rise and I can't go outside. <laughs> I'm going to go on my pal- on my balcony. I was just going to say, you can do that. You know something I've done before? I had a, a piece of aluminum foil and the oh, paper yes. that I burnt on, you I burnt it on the aluminum better foil. give me in- <laughs> Burn the bull in aluminum foil. Um, yes. Yes. And I just, I actually, I'm thinking about it. I just bought this faux fireplace thing uh, off Amazon. And um, it's meant for my nightstand. Uh-huh. But I'm about to take that outside. There and you sit it go. Outside and I'm bur- you better. All I need now is a little cannabis. Hey, I got you on that too. <laughs> but all I need now, like I just feel like I need to fully emerge into yes. the lifestyle. Yes. Yes. I love that. What are you most excited about 
right now in this at this time in your life what are you most excited about oh my gosh really just like sharing everything that I've learned because it's it has helped me so much yeah. like even with the cannabis stuff like I'm opening the dispenser on like 420 okay so that is something that I just oh my god because the vision I have for this building and what I've been through to get this vision mm-hmm. like to bring it to life has mm-hmm. been it, it, it's been a lot so that is probably like the one thing that right now I'm just like I can't wait. Are you having a big grand opening? I am. Okay. So I'm doing a soft opening on 420, but I'm having a big, I'm calling the celebratory grand opening later. So, yeah. I got to be at, I I need to be at one of the openings. I'm sending, I need to be at one of the openings. I'm sending an invite. Not both. I like, I just, let's make it to the openings. I want to be open at the opening. Okay. (laughs) Yes. I'm not, I don't do, um, I'm not really into like cannabis and things like that. Yeah. And mostly it's not that I don't believe in its medicinal benefits. Mm-hmm. I you, you have to be careful where you source stuff. And for yes. me, it's, it's been more um, of a fear of, you know, they're lacing yes. what's supposed to be good for you with all kinds of dangerous all kinds things. Of stuff, yeah. So I love that you are going into this space and creating something that is safe. Yes. Or, organic, mm-hmm. clean, safe. Mm-hmm. And I'm educating our people. I'm educating the people that are coming yeah. for it. Like, yeah. cause you need to know about what you're getting into, mm-hmm. you know? And also on the other side of that, I'm destigmatizing and removing the taboo from cannabis use mm. by educating people. You know, you came out of retirement. I did. You came out of retirement. I really did. <laughs> I swear. I did. How long were you in retirement? For about Three years. Okay. Yes. You're out of retirement. I'm out of retirement. Not, but you're not tiptoeing out of retirement. No. Oh, I. I oh, no. You I'm blazing the, the trail right now. You yes. said, girl, I'm back in the workforce. <laughs> yes. Sign me up. I'm yes. here doing this thing. Like you came, you came back mm-hmm. swinging. Yes. Yeah. Two businesses. <laughs> yes. I'm imagining that you're you're everywhere right now, just letting yes. people know, bringing awareness. Like yes. what. what you're everywhere right now. Right? I, yes, I, I am. See, I've seen you <laughs> Kia, on. I'm just playing. <laughs> right, 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 right. I've seen you on TV shows. Yeah. I've seen you on radio shows. Mm-hmm. I've seen you on podcasts. Like, what mission are you on right now? educating the Mm -hmm. world and like really just sharing what I've learned. Like I've the amount of money and you know, this, or I'm pretty sure you do that. You, yeah. That you would spend for this knowledge that should be fucking free, free. You know what I'm saying? And that like, I'm just going to say like, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, like learning the Mm -hmm. things that I've learned to, Mm -hmm. to be in the space that I'm in. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, this shouldn't be like this. Mm-hmm. And so it's my goal to make this available to the people, make it accessible. Yeah. Like that's really like, that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what you're here for. Listen, I you know? feel you on that one <laughs> year. I believe it was 2021. I spent over a hundred thousand dollars that year alone in mentorship and education. And that's, because <laughs> that's what I'm, it? why didn't we get this in school? Like, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said, I know, you know, I like know this. <laughs> I, I saw a story on Instagram um, and you know, you don't ever know how much is true, but I yeah. did look at this two little girls um, in like middle school or something mm-hmm. solved the Pythagorean theorem. Wow. The a squared plus B squared. Equals C squared. squared. And wow. the first thought that I had was, because the world is going crazy about, oh my God, they finally solved the Pythagorean theorem. And the first thought that I had was, this one already solved? <laughs> Ain't nobody, right, so y'all nobody had ever solved this? Learn this shit is, yeah. No, why are we learning this? Nowhere have I ever had to implement the no, freaking Pythagorean theorem. Man, let me tell you something. I, I, and I keep, I've said this in several other, other interviews. I was like, I don't care. As long as my kids know how to fucking count money, and, and you know what I'm saying? Taxes, and pay, like, what? I'm good. All that old extra shit. That's a that's a, another big reason why I have them homeschool. Mm-hmm. That shit you don't need to use because never in my adult life have I gone to a structure and said, "Wow, the obtuse <laughs> angle, the obtuse angle on that." Man, like for what? The the, the way that that isosceles <laughs> angle is, you know, like wow, like they really put the, we, never have never. I discussed a rhombus. 
Never. I am actually, in fact, surprised that I remember that terminology. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I am actual. I don't know where it's coming from, but send it back because that's not what I need. Teach At me accounting. All. Yes. Teach me finance. Yes. Teach me how to manage my credit. Yes. Teach me how to make money actively and passively. Yes. 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 These are the things that we should be learning. And I'm starting to see. Um, like Harvard and Yale and other universities, I'm starting to see that they're offering like these free classes mm-hmm. to, you know, business and things like that. But we should be learning this at such a young age, such a young age, such a young age. And that's the reason that I believe strongly that there's such a huge wealth gap. Yep. There's such a huge wealth gap because, uh, you know, the, the bottom line, the, the truth of the matter is um, when it comes to, whites and blacks Mm -hmm. white people are just way further along in terms Mm -hmm. of financial wealth building generational wealth and i believe now we're we're in our we're in our season we're catching up (laughs) yeah and it it didn't start that way if you understand history it didn't start that way we were robbed right Mm -hmm. but the truth of the matter is that's what that's what it all of the resources are going into white neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. All of the access are going into white neighborhoods. All of the invitations to the table yeah. go into these white neighborhoods. And you got to really be connected on some level. Very. And if I could tell parents, you know, anything, the success of our children really starts with us. It does. And while I don't believe that it's up to us, because I strongly believe that uh, our kids are born looking like our looking like their parents, but they die looking like their decisions. Ooh, yes, I believe that. <laughs> That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. You're, you're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Yes. So while you can be born into a non-ideal life or environment, mm-hmm. the decisions that you make along the way can literally change everything. Yep. But here's the thing. Why do we have to birth them into non-ideal environments? That. We know better now. Yes. We, we got the internet. Yes. Social media. <laughs> yes. We got the Drika Gates of the world who's <laughs> out here just sharing. Yeah. We've got podcast platforms. We got all the things. Yes. The priority should really be us stepping up as parents and saying, this may have impacted my generation this may be in my bloodline this might be in my dna but it won't go past me yep like it stops here it does Mm -hmm. and that's the that's kind of like that's the space that i've been in for the past couple of years like this is it no this is it we're not doing this again we're not living for anybody else nope we're not suffering no we're not dimming our light no we're not doing any of those things we have voices yes we deserve to be heard (laughs) yes what are you teaching your daughter about using her voice in this male dominated space oh my gosh sometimes i want to wring her neck Mm -hmm. but i'm like no i need you to stay like that Mm -hmm. because when i was growing up and you probably experienced the same thing we were told to be quiet we were told not to ask questions Mm -hmm. we were told because because i said so Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but i don't with my daughter she will ask me a million questions and drive me fucking crazy yeah but i'm like no i need you to stay like that and everyone around me i had to tell my mom she was like well she was being smart with me i said no she's not i need her to stay like that Mm. because she needs to be able to speak up for herself Mm -hmm. when she comes of age and when she's an adult and when she's out on her own i don't want her to be like me and afraid to speak Mm -hmm. afraid to stand up for myself Mm -hmm. you know so that's what i'm doing with east right now (laughs) and what i've been doing i love this i want you to think about your life (laughs) as we're wrapping this up Mm -hmm. and you have years of experience just in so many different things Mm -hmm. what are you most proud of right now oh my gosh just the person that I am today and just really how I'm able to just um just life Mm -hmm. like I swear to god that is what I'm most proud of today Mm -hmm. like I you can throw shit at me all day long I'm over here like knocking it out (laughs) you know what I'm saying really just the the space that I'm in today that is what I'm most proud of the the human being that I am do you recognize the inspiration that you are Um, yes, you're giving me, I just had chills again. Uh, yes. And that's why I came, that's why I came out of retirement. Yeah. (laughs) No, like like seriously, because people will tell you like, oh my God, you're great. You're Mm -hmm. beautiful. You're all these things and you feel it and you're so grateful. You're so appreciative, Mm -hmm. but there's something different about you, Drika. Like Mm -hmm. this is our first time ever meeting our first time ever having a conversation and you've got 
something special Mm -hmm. on your shoulders. And I wonder when I meet people like you, like, do you know that you're the one? Oh, gosh, you're making me cry. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) like all by yourself. Yes. I know that you've contributed in great ways to so many efforts, but all by yourself, do you know that you're the one? Yes. (laughs) You're making me cry. That's why I said, and I wasn't even joking, but that is seriously why I stood up. Kia. And Shannon both know, like I sent out a text. I was like, I'm not playing small anymore. Mm -mm. Like I sent them that text. And like ever since then, I've been like pedal to the metal. Yeah. Pedal to the metal. It was so important (laughs) for me to dive into your journey today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Into like this, because this is about you now. You have entered your season where you've been great for a long time. Yeah. But this is about you yeah. and everything that you've been able to do in your past and everything that you'll continue to do, like mm-hmm. uh, duplicate this same, like bring that same beast men- mentality and that same beast energy into what you got <laughs> going on, because there really is something special about you Thank and the you. world deserves to see that. Mm-hmm. And you deserve to feel the world seeing that gift inside of you. Oh, seriously! Wow. Thank you. Yeah, oh, for, my sure. Gosh. for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. You said that you are on this journey mm-hmm. right now and you're getting out and you're sitting down and having conversations. I hope this has been a good one for you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this has been amazing. <laughs> I hope this yes. has been a good one. But you said I asked you why. Like, what's the point of it all? Right. Mm-hmm. And you said, because I, I, I have something to share. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that's on your heart to share that we didn't cover today? I mean, I fear. Look, she, you know, she's so supposed to do I mean, I, I, Kia's over there with the doula thing. Are you a doula? I am. I'm a birth doula <gasps> and a hypnobirthing childbirth educator. Swipe through those notes over there. Let me see what else you so <laughs> <laughs> But again, that's just a part of me just wanting to educate our women. Like, I, I hear so many women with, like, these horrible birthing stories. And it's just like, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm. You just have to educate yourself and also get some people, get get you a doula back in the days the women were there to support the women mm-hmm. we weren't depending on our men to be there when helping it was us time get to have a baby you were surrounded with by the women, women. <laughs> not the men not the men so yeah who are over there and can't handle it exactly they need a stretcher too <laughs> that part i'm like send them to go get some food yes, you know yes, what i'm yes, saying yes, yes, yes. so that's a yeah. good point i never thought about it like that like back in the day back in the day you were surrounded by women 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 supporting women. Mm, women supporting women. And it's such a safe space. And not to knock the men who genuinely no, not want to be there and take the time. But there's a reason. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for it. Every time I think we're ending the conversation, there's oh, another no, layer. There's a, do you have something else? You got Just something else on the screen? No. Are we good? <laughs> doula okay so i'm imagining that we can't just hire you to be our doula no (laughs) i would love to it's just so like with what i'm doing right now i could not be there and and fully be like supporting someone because i'm all over the place but i have done it for three women and my sister-in-law who i who um she's a part of the team as well like i was there for her birth um last september oh my gosh like i i just love it i love bringing life you are life. <laughs> yes. You are life magnified. You represent living things. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, seriously. Like yes. your energy is alive. What you're working on is a vision for life. Yes. You are producing life. Like you really represent living things. That is so awesome. Thank you. I have loved this conversation. <laughs> I hope yes. that you guys have loved this yes. conversation. Drika, tell everybody um, your Instagram and all of that will be in the description. Yes. But uh, what do you want us to try first? Like, where where do we go to try something? Oh, my gosh. Get to know yourself better. Mm-hmm. Have fun with yourself. Mm-hmm. Explore yourself. Mm-hmm. Because that's what I've been doing. I'm just having fun right now. Love on yourself. Yes. Love, love on, on yourself. yourself. Particularly at night and without the kids around. Okay. That part. <laughs> You guys, this has been another amazing episode of Full Transparency. This is like in my top fives for sure. This has been my, I don't want to, yes, we're up there. Yes, this has been like the best. (laughs) This has definitely been in my top five. And I've got over, I mean, I've done hundreds of interviews at this point. So we got to bring you back. Like, I want you to come back once the wellness.
wellness brand, um, you know, is taking off more. I want yes. you to come back after the uh, cannabis is brand is open. And when we're like, we just need to have girl talk, like I'm some down. segments for the women. And it's, girl, I'm listen, down. Y'all, <laughs> I need you to comment right now. What part of Drika's testimony, what part of her journey stood out to you the most? What has you pumped up and ready to go? I wish y'all could feel how my heart is pumping, how I cannot wait to get home and just start discovering and making some changes and identifying areas in which I'm going to do a new thing to get a bigger result. Yes. Because we're not dimming our lights no, anymore. No, we're not. We're not. We're not dimming our lights anymore. <laughs> On the count of three, that's how we're ending it. Don't dim your light. Shine, baby, shine. On the count of three, that's All what right. we're saying. Okay. One, two, three. Don't, Don't dim, dim your, your light. light. Shine, shine, baby, shine. shine. Let's go. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>